written after a uh, concert in uh, the garden at Whitehorn. It is divided into five sections of 12 lines each, and each uh, stanza has a theme. There's the, the themes, uh, and there, these themes are expressed in each of the stanzas. There's wind, uh, sunlight, the people, the bird nature, and the music. And it starts with an, with an overture. It goes like this. The calm garden has no instant impact, but creeps into consciousness like a melody. Our close attention uncovers the corners where sunbeams tickle small blossoms. Notes float in the breeze as the musicians prepare their instruments. The audience finds places to settle. Before the music began to weave its threads with golden sunlight among the trees and flowers, this place belonged to insects. Slow crickets chirped, hidden deep in ornamental grasses. The low humming of bees followed them from rosebush to peonies. Somewhere a crow croaked out his discontent. When people settle and the instruments create a distinctive mood, insects are forgotten, but shy, as if uninvited guests, small birds begin to appear. A pair of robins in a far corner of the lawn. Sparrows fluttering on wall and bushes. Goldfinches in the trees. A measured overtone. Two. Morning's overcast was shattered by sunrise, and its remnants swept away to the east. In the garden's freedom, light chases butterflies and bounces off copper miracles. The long, low tones sliding from the French horn's bell are the playground of sunbeams. They climb the scale of the clarinet's melody. Glare blinds the oboist. She shields her eyes with neon glasses. The elderly ladies in the front row wear wide-brimmed hats. Young people sit in shade against the wall. Light and shadow shimmer on shoulders and arms, We slowly and silently in the intimate music. Three. As we dream to the conversation between flute and clarinet, the eyes can see that a breeze is teasing flowers beside the path. Low blue blossoms bob. Tall pale pink ones stand still, stiff as if on parade. One draft feeling like ants crawling on a young man's hairy calf is slapped and scratched. Slender leaves above us whisper so as not to disturb the clear song around them. The wind soothes us, makes the warm sun bearable, and it fans locks of hair away from faces. Close bins hold the sheets of music clipped to the stands. Four. The audience is an organism, a collection of unrelated units. Music is the adhesive that holds us in this garden. In the front row, gray-haired ladies in summer frocks are using fans to fend off the sun's heat. 
and hold tight to their hats against capricious winds. A middle-aged couple holds hands as if it were a newfound passion. Students squat at the wall between the trees and roses. Before the performance, musicians and instruments were individuals. Breezes and sun fused them into one entity, a wind quintet, a singleness of mind and purpose with five voices. Five. Silver, brass, ebony, and warm, polished wood. Each instrument displays its form and its voice. The flute produces a concise string of notes that drifts among the flowers, rides breezes into the tree branches. The clarinet and oboe for a moment mutter a disagreement, then discover harmony. The bassoon provides the low, sonorous tones from a firm form, a firm foundation conceived in age and wisdom, while the French horn laughs and sings promises that the young imagine, shouting them all skyward. The swirl of the oldest magic, music and light, and nature binding together the human spirit. Coda. The gleaming instruments are tucked into dull cases. The music still hangs from branches, lies on the grass, becoming one with the lace of air and sunlight. The patrons wander along the paths between beds of organized flowers and sip lemonade. Like the birds, they disappear slowly, wrapped in contentment.